Hello! Hi guys, it's Inamica4 here with the Sony Xperia Z smartphone. In this video, we're going to show you how you can pair up your Sony PlayStation 3 wireless controller to your Xperia Z. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is root your smartphone. If your phone is not rooted, you can't go through this process, but I'll leave a link in the description of a video of how you can root your Sony Xperia Z. Once your phone's rooted, you're going to need a couple of things. Obviously, the PlayStation 3 controller, the cable that came with it, and a USB on the go cable. Now this costs a couple of pounds from eBay or Amazon and as you can see along the one side it's got a micro USB cable along the other it's got a standard USB 2.0 port. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting one. Next what we need to do is go to the Play Store and then search for 6-axis controller or 6-axis and you'll see a couple of applications that pop up there the first one is called 6-axis controller which is the one that we need and it costs I think just over a pound I think when I initially bought it but I've already got it installed so I'm gonna tap into it and open it up here it starts up with this configuration here and as you can see you got start stop change input method and pair controller now what you need to do essentially is whenever you play any sort of game that requires a use of the controller and you've got it paired you need to go into this application start it change the input method to the controller and then when you're done playing just remember to go back and stop it so what we're going to do is we're going to connect up using the USB on the go cable first so we'll just open the cover and get that slid in there it does pop out a little bit as you can see there but it does stay connected okay and what I'm going to use is a old PlayStation I say a PlayStation a Samsung dock that I've got here and then what we're going to do is if I take the secondary cable so the standard USB 2.0 port plugs into the USB on the go cable as you can see here get that plugged in like so and then the other side of that cable where you got the micro USB port that plugs into the controller just plug it straight in there and it starts flashing okay now we're ready to rock so what we can do is click start so the phone starts looking and you can see the routing access is required here so you say grant access to super user and it starts going through the motions and what we're going to do is change input method to the six axis controller so that the on screen, on screen keyboard rather doesn't pop up so it started to look for the controllers there as you can see listening for controllers what I'm going to do is press the home button or the playstation button on the controller and then it should pair it and as you can see a little bar or boxes come around uh, the PlayStation symbol along the top so if I start moving it around as you can see it starts moving around on the screen as well so that would indicate to me that it's now been paired so what I'm gonna do is click on pair controller that's the Bluetooth address of uh, the phone itself and it says allow the application 6-axis controller to access a USB device I'm gonna say yes and you can see there it says master address updated so that's now paired so now I can unplug it from the PlayStation 3 controller and it'll be okay and we're okay to get rid of this cable now because that's paired up now so we'll get rid of the cables because that's no longer required I'll click OK to the water resistant cover and as you can see there it says client 1 connected battery status full and on the controller you can see the number one light is on so that's now successfully paired with the Sony Xperia Z smartphone. Now if I haven't already changed the input method I would have just hit on change input method and switched it over to six axis controller so that when I'm playing games the games aren't looking for the on-screen keyboard uh, input they're looking for the six axis controller which is now paired. So I'll just hit back. Now while we're here hit the button in the top right the menu gives you preferences and help hit on preferences gives you a couple of options here where you can emulate keyboard and mouse buttons on a keyboard or mouse if you were playing a game which would take those types of uh, inputs so you can map different keyboard options to different buttons on the the gamepad itself but uh, that's just an overview of the keyboard and mouse but what we're interested in here is gamepad settings we want to use the native controls that come with the PlayStation 3 controller in the game so if it isn't already ticked put a tick next to it, enable gamepad so if it's uh, there brilliant if it's not tip it and if I go back we're now done so we're just gonna load up a game we're just loading into Grand Theft Auto Vice City and we'll see if the controls native to the Sony PlayStation 3 controller are still working as you can see it's still paired we're not wired you only use the, the wiring to initially pair it and that's now done 
So I'm gonna hit X if that works to skip through any of the there we go. Yeah, the X to skip through the intros is working. I'm gonna hit X to tap to continue again. And yeah, that's working. The buttons are working. The joysticks are working. Excellent, I'm gonna hit resume game. There we go, that's loaded in. Um, I don't know what I was doing last time in the game, but I'm in a car, so. As I move the joystick, you can see the wheels are moving. So if I hit reverse, which normally would be square, native controls that still works awesome x to go forward yeah. handbrake being a r1 still works Let's put the volume down a little bit yeah controls are still working see if i can get out triangle to get out yeah absolutely still working fine native to the playstation 3 controller walking around with the joystick still works yeah, native controls are working for punching, jumping. Let's get back in the car. Again, still wireless. We were paired via the six axis controller. Sound is awesome as ever. Handbrake working brilliantly there. Let's see if we can change. Yeah, you can change the viewpoint as well with the select button still. Awesome. So we're in dead trigger now, still wirelessly connected and paired up with the Sony Xperia Z as you can see here. We've had to map some of the buttons in order for it to work properly because it's not like Grand Theft Auto where it uses the gamepad settings automatically. But once you can map the settings, it's okay. As you can see, you've got to map the buttons wherever you prefer to use for fire, reload, that type of stuff. Whoa. What was that? Okay. I think I may have mapped the aim to a not so useful button. Come on, boy. Right, and that works particularly well. Now, as I say, all you do is go to options, gamepad settings, and customize gamepad in dead trigger and then choose what button configuration you want, what buttons you want to use for fire, reload, aiming, that type of stuff. And just remember, once you finish playing, what you need to do is come out of the game itself and go back into the six axis controller application and just switch the input method back to keyboard. So once you finish playing, go back in here, hit stop, so it stops communicating with the controller Go to change input method and switch it back to international keyboard for the Sony Xperia Z. And then you can come out of it back to your phone. Any comments or questions you guys have got, hit them up in the comment section down below there. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and like what you saw. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. It's also down there as well. It doesn't cost you a penny and it's totally free. And you can also check out some of our forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next time.